Hi, this is Jake with Blue Lock, and today we're going to give you a vCloud Director overview. Uh, what we're going to cover in this video is the virtual data center co concept, vApps, virtual machines, and catalogs. Essentially, with every data center, whether it's physical or virtual in this case, it comes down to four basic building blocks your compute or processor, your memory, your storage, and your networking. So it's important to note with virtual data centers, I can have multiple virtual data centers. This might be good for a production versus development or a product versus internal IT. The idea with the virtual data centers is you can split up resources so they're, they're not stopping on top of each other. Let's drill down into uh, this first virtual data center. Let's talk about this vApp concept. So the vApp concept uh, was brought on by VMware, and it's been, been around for a little while, um, but they're actually forcing you to use it in, in vCloud Director, which is okay because there are some cool features. The idea behind a vApp is a lot of times your application doesn't necessarily fit on one server. It's a multi-tiered application. So you might have a web server, an app server, and a database server. And while it's nice to have you know, some scalability and flexibility, managing those servers as a, a single application becomes difficult. So the vApp concept allows me to manage multiple virtual machines as one application. So let's take a look at um, my Exchange vApp here. As you can see, I have an AD server and an Exchange server. If you're unfamiliar with Exchange, you um, need an Active Directory server in order to power Exchange, and then uh, the Exchange server itself you know, holds our mail and our calendars and uh, some collaboration stuff. So I can power this on, I can power this off as a group. So we don't have to, you know, worry about managing one and then the other. We can we can do them both together. The other part of vApps is I can have internal vApp networking. So these network interface cards are completely on a separated network, and then we can have them firewalled off from the internet. So let's take a look at a few of these vApp properties. So I mentioned powering on and powering off virtual machines uh, together within a vApp, but that doesn't always work out if one needs to power up after the other. So we have this idea of boot order in here. So I can set my boot order for my Active Directory server to be boot first and then exchange to boot second. So we want the Active Directory to come first because it has all our users on it. And then the Exchange server to come up second because it requires our Active Directory server. I can then set a start delay on the Exchange server so it gives a the AD server a couple minutes to, to boot up. Come back in here and show you networking. So we talked about having this internal vApp network. So this vApp does not go out, this network does not go outside of our vApp. Uh, you can see that we have um, it connected to our internet organization network and we have uh, NAT and firewall enabled. And go ahead and take a look at the details of those and see that, oh, we also have a DHCP option for this network too. That's nice because I don't really want to have to spin up a DHCP virtual machine. And then firewall, a basic firewall is added in here as well. So I, you can put in the name, the IP, the port, and the protocol of the rule that you need. And then we also have NAT. So the AD and Exchange server can have internet IPs uh, and then also internal vApp network IPs. Let's focus for a minute on the v virtual machine. So if you are a VMware customer, you are pretty familiar with the virtual machines and the features that they have. But 
if you have been using another cloud product, you might not be aware of the flexibility. So I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit of the flexibility with this. I have complete control over the number of CPUs and the amount of memory that I can assign each virtual machine. So for instance, if I wanted to do load testing or something on this Active Directory server, I could bump this guy's CPUs all the way up to 8, and I could bump his memory all the way up to 255. And oh yeah, we wanted to do some backups temporarily, so I'm going to add another hard disk to this virtual machine, and we want that guy to be 256 gig. So you can see you have complete flexibility of all of all of those resources down to a virtual machine level. So those four basic building blocks we talked about, CPU, memory, storage, and network. So let's talk about catalogs. A catalog is essentially a private repository for my V apps that I've created or uploaded or my media that I have uploaded which might include installation media for certain types of software. So inside a pr private catalog we can have V app templates. Now I did say V app template which means everything that you saw in our in our little V app demonstration goes with it. So networking, firewall, NAT, DHCP, all those settings can go with it, uh, including your virtual machines. So every single virtual machine that was in that V app will be deployed uh, from from the catalog if you copy to the catalog. There's all this, also this idea of gold master. So for instance, if I had multiple IIS templates here, I might be a little confused as to which one I should be deploying into production. So you can see that we have this one marked as Gold Master so that my other development additions of the V app don't get deployed without me knowing about it. You can also see that we have an F5 Big IP here. We've partnered with F5 and Checkpoint to provide some virtual appliances. So you're not stuck with a, a web-based load balancer or, or a, you know, a proprietary firewall that we manage on the back end and we kind of just give you a web interface for. These are your own appliances that live inside your virtual data center. There are also public catalogs that BlueLock provides that have a number of templates already made for you. So if you wanted a specific virtual machine that you didn't really have made up and didn't want to go through the installation, we have all these made for you. Additionally, there's no need to upload media into your own catalog. You can actually find the media in the public catalog and then copy it over as needed. I think that about wraps up our first demonstration. If you have any questions, you can hit us up at bluelock.com and look forward to seeing you again.